Good morning. Welcome to St. Helena Catholic Church for the celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. It is a joy to worship with you today. In order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration, we ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during Mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy <coughs> Communion. We are encouraged to receive communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive communion, Catholic <coughs> participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you are not of our faith or outside of the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journey Songbook, number 903B. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you to St. Helena Church as we gather on this glorious feast of divine mercy, a day when the Lord pours out his grace in extraordinary ways upon his people. And so as we come before the Lord, let us prepare to give him thanks by calling to mind our sin and humbly asking his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. 
through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. If we have any children who are here for Children's Church, if you would come forward. Good boys and girls, this is a very special feast day, so let's pray that God will pour out his mercy upon you today. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, and we ask you, Lord, to pour out your grace upon these children who stand before us. We thank you, Jesus, for entrusting them to us, to their parents, their godparents, their grandparents, and to all the members of our community that we might 
might watch over them, pray for them, give them good example. And we ask too, Spirit of God, that you fill them this day with your holy presence. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, we, that we keep his commandments, 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water, blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side. I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today, my friends, is the eighth day or the octave day of Easter, a day that is known in the church as the Feast of Divine Mercy. You know, in Jewish tradition, the great pilgrimage feasts like Passover did not last just a single day. In Jewish tradition, our ancestors in the faith went up to Jerusalem to celebrate the great pilgrimage feast, but they stayed in the holy city to worship and to give thanks to God through prayer and sacrifice for a period of eight days from one Sabbath until the next. And it was on the eighth day, on the final day of the feast, that God would pour out his blessings in a superabundant way. And in the same way, today on the eighth day of Easter, the Lord has promised to pour out extraordinary graces and blessings upon us, upon all of those who approach him this day with a humble heart, with a clean heart, with an attitude of repentance and trust in him. In the diary of St. Faustina, who is the apostle of divine mercy, our Lord Jesus says, on this day the very depths of my tender mercy are open, and I will pour out a whole ocean of graces on those who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and the punishment due to sin. On this day, the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. And so let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. For mankind will not find peace until he turns to the font of my mercy. Let's unpack that a little. There are two things I want to point out about that statement, which has been approved by the church as being worthy of our belief. First of all, our Lord Jesus says that he offers us a unique and extraordinary grace on this day, namely the forgiveness of sins, but also the temporal punishment due to sin. Some have called this a kind of second baptismal grace. In other words, our souls will be cleansed and even the temporal punishment due to sin will be remitted or canceled. So that from this day forward, we start out anew on our journey to God, just like an infant who has just been baptized. Think of what an extraordinary gift of mercy this is. But our Lord also says that we must go to confession to receive this grace. And the church has interpreted this to mean that we must have confessed our sins in the days or the weeks leading up to the feast and that we receive him this day worthily in Holy Communion, namely in the state of grace. In the gospel today on this second Sunday of Easter, we see how this overflowing ocean of God's mercy was poured out upon his apostles and upon one of the apostles in particular. In the gospel today, St. John tells us that on Easter Sunday, the risen Lord appeared to the apostles, and he breathed upon them, and he empowered them through the gift of the Holy Spirit to forgive sins in his name. Just three days before, on the night before he died, our Lord ordained his apostles as priests, and he empowered them to make him truly present, body and blood, soul and divinity, under the humble sacramental signs of bread and wine. And then on Easter Sunday night, as his very first gift to the church after rising from the dead, our Lord instituted the sacrament of reconciliation as the ordinary sacramental means for the forgiveness of our sins, and in particular, for the forgiveness of mortal sin, our serious sin. Jesus said, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. And then he breathed upon the apostles, giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and said, whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. And yet, as we just heard, one of the apostles, Thomas, was not with the others 
on Easter Sunday in the upper room when the, when the Lord appeared to them there. Later on, after Thomas had returned, the others told him what happened, how the risen Christ had appeared to them. But Thomas stubbornly refused to believe until he could see the Lord with his own eyes and touch him, his wounds, with his own hand. Despite his lack of faith, our Lord showed great mercy and love to Thomas when he appeared to him eight days later on the second Sunday of Easter. And he invited him then to see and to touch the wounds in his hands and his side, to be no longer unbelieving, but to surrender and to believe. Our Lord also said to Thomas, speaking about future generations, of Christians like ourselves. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And it was at that point that Thomas made that beautiful profession of faith, which we ourselves make, my Lord and my God. Today on this Feast of Divine Mercy, I want to say something about each of the five most important aspects or parts of the message of divine mercy. I've already spoken about the first part, namely the feast of divine mercy itself, by designating or naming that unique grace that our Lord gives us in this feast, the forgiveness of our sin and the temporal punishment due to sin. The second aspect of our Lord's message to St. Faustina whose relic we have in our altar, is the hour of divine mercy. This is the hour when our Lord Jesus breathed out his last breath on the cross. St. John tells us that in that hour, the three o'clock hour, at the moment of our Lord's death, one of the Roman soldiers who was standing guard at the foot of the cross to make sure that Jesus was dead before his body was taken down pierced his side, his very heart, with a lance. And immediately, St. John says, blood and water poured out. This is the source of the unending fountain of mercy that our Lord speaks about, the waters of baptism, by which we were cleansed of original sin and adopted as children of God, the blood of the Holy Eucharist, the sacrifice through which we receive the gift of eternal life. The third and fourth aspects of the message of divine mercy have to do with prayer. On the 13th of September in the year 1935, while at prayer, St. Faustina had a vision of an angel. It was the angel of God's wrath who was sent from heaven to chastise and to punish the earth. And Faustina was struck with great fear as she saw this. She began to plead with God for mercy. But the wrath of God would not be appeased or held back until our Lord Jesus himself appeared to her. And he gave her the words of a prayer that she was to offer to God and to teach others to pray. He instructed her to say on her rosary beads, on the Our Father bead, these words, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And then on the Hail Mary bead, she was to pray for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. And of course, we sing these beautiful prayers before every weekend Mass. If you listen carefully to the words of those two prayers that comprise the chaplet of divine mercy, you recognize how Eucharistic they are in nature. In other words, our Lord invites us to unite ourselves, our prayer, our hearts to his perfect sacrifice, for our Lord offers himself eternally to God the Father for our sake body and blood, soul and divinity. In this way, we please 
God, our Heavenly Father, by our prayer and acknowledge that it is by the passion and death of his eternal Son that we have been saved. In a subsequent entry in the diary, beginning with number 1209, our Lord gives St. Faustina the novena of divine mercy, nine special prayer intentions which are to be offered to God, our Lord says, from Good Friday until Easter Saturday, which was yesterday. These special intentions range all the way from prayer for devout, devout souls and the souls of innocent children to lukewarm souls and those who do not believe in God. And somewhere in that spectrum of intentions, all of us, all of God's people are included. For no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy as long as there is life in the body and hope in the heart. In fact, our Lord said to St. Faustina, the greater the sinner, the greater his or her right to my mercy if we but repent and believe. Fifth and finally, the Lord told St. Faustina that she was to have an image of him painted, an image of him as he had appeared to her. The Lord appeared in this manner to St. Faustina over a period of seven years, from 1931 to 1938, which was the time of her death. In Numbers 47 and 48 of her diary, we read, in the evening, I saw the Lord Jesus clothed in a white garment. One hand was raised in a gesture of blessing, while the other touched the garment at his breast. From beneath his garment there emanated two large rays of light, one red, the other pale. And our Lord said, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lord went on to say, I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world. And I promise that the soul who will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies here on earth, especially at the hour of death. For I myself will defend such a soul by my own glory, as my own glory. What a tremendous promise the Lord has made, and I certainly encourage all of you to have the image of divine mercy in your own home. These are the five essential aspects of the message that Jesus gave to St. Faustina. They can easily be remembered by means of an acronym, namely Finch, F-I-N-C-H, just like the little bird. F, the feast of divine mercy. I, the image of divine mercy. N, the novena of divine mercy. C, the chaplet of divine mercy. And H, the hour of divine mercy. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, I trust in you. I invite you now to rise as we make our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He rose from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Father's love, let us offer our needs to him in prayer. 
for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, and for the intentions of all of us present today, we pray to the Lord. For all the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to the living and proclaiming Christ's mercy, we pray to the Lord. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with confidence and certainty, that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. For those for whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick and for those who have died, especially Deacon Mike Angelo and our beloved pastor, Father Mark Beard, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, loving Father, in this glorious feast, we give you thanks. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for your humble obedience to the Father's will, for suffering and dying on the cross, and from rising and for rising from the dead that we might have eternal life. Breathe anew your Spirit into our hearts, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work of cleansing us from every sinful thought, action, or desire. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Regina Celi Leitare, Alleluia. We aqua meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit. Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deo. Alleluia. O Queen of Heaven, be joyful. Alleluia. For ye whom you have humbly borne for us, Alleluia, has arisen as he promised, Alleluia, offer now our prayer to God, Alleluia. Regina Celi Leitare, Alleluia. Quia que meruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you have, all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas, St. Faustina, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. I know that my Redeemer lives, the one who calls me home. I long to see God face to face, 
to see with my own eyes. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall rise again. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall rise
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any evil spirits, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, or demonic blessings among those who have gathered their loved ones and their possessions through the authority of Holy Mother Church and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I bind them separately and individually and break all seals. They are bound, the seals are broken. They're done so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Totally yours, Immaculate Conception, Mary, my mother, live in me, act in me, speak in me and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind, love through my heart. Give me your dispositions and feelings. Teach me, lead me, and guide me to Jesus. Correct, enlighten, and expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my soul, my entire personality and life. Replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. Let me live in you and keep me in this union always. Amen. I thank all of you for being at Mass today. I hope you have a very beautiful Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, I would ask you to keep in your prayers those who are going to be confirmed this afternoon at the Spanish Mass. Our Bishop, Bishop Duke, is coming and he'll be here along with Father Robert Merced, the Dominican priest from Hammond, um, and the bishop will administer the sacrament of confirmation to about 25, mostly adults, uh, who are being confirmed. So please keep them in your prayer for a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their lives this afternoon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thank you.